Hello. Hey guys, uh, welcome to, uh, well, to the regulars. Like Rico and I are probably the, you haven't seen Rico for about six weeks. It's because like all of us, we're in isolation and we, we, we do much better when we're next to each other. And so we haven't been next to each other. So we haven't live streamed together at all. So is the first one. Yeah, and the last time I tried to do that, we, I, I, you know, it was just like having a voice on one thing and me talking with him, trying to get on, but it was really bad. Now we have Rico with us to talk about um, gaming and what he's doing in gaming design. And also after that, we'll be talking about digital gaming and Patreon gaming. And um, basically the two sites that I've been looking at, one of them in particular, uh, to do with visual novels. I've been hard out into visual novels for the last Ooh, five days or so, and I'm That's enjoying true. myself playing different games. So, uh, Rico, tell us before I get into it, Rico, tell us about um, what you've been doing up with gaming design and stuff. I've um, been trying to get up to speed with gaming design for a while in my uh, spare time with Unity and also some good pixel art kind of programs. And so, this lockdown's been really good for me because I've just been able to kind of focus on doing some courses because I I paid for the few good apps and things I needed. Unity's free. And then I had had all these courses I kind of did a few kind of segments of. And then mm. I kind of ran out of steam or time and energy. And no excuse at the moment. So I focused real hard and uh, invested in some other kind of um, – I invested in the Corgi engine for Unity, which is like a, a kit set that kind of eliminates some of the programming uh, for a yeah. platformer. But you can kind of backwards engineer and kind of figure out some of the settings and stuff. So I, I spent a lot of time like looking at particle systems, like where you make blood splats and dust and smoke and stuff, mm. uh, with a few fails and then digging through Google. But it's been real good. Um, been practicing parallax scrolling last night. Um, it's hard getting all the levels moving as you've got to set the different um, pr uh, parameters for them, and so. I'm still figuring out what the best parameters are, but I got clouds moving nicely, which was cool on a semi-transparent layer. So that was fun. It's quite interesting. I'm like gaming, gaming like, I mean, with you've um, before you had to code everything, like years back, you had to code everything. And now you've already got presets on how to do stuff, like, uh, that, um, you know, like blank spaces, you just fill in what you want to do. Uh, is that like, with Unity, is it like presets as well? That. Like you, Unity isn't designed to be like that by default for very basic stuff. You can kind of plug and play a little, but you have to really do a few courses to even understand how that works. Um, but the thing I bought, yes, you can do a lot of parameters and they're kind of presets. So if you're using the moving pieces, there's lots of samples and you go, around, I'm going to take this piece. I change the graphics. I change the behavior a little mm -hmm. and you can look at the code, but you don't really have to. But you've got to figure out what, you know, 0.1 or 0.3 difference will make a difference for a bullet, say. How, how mm. differently will that move? Um, how will it disperse? Or, you know, if you put three bullets in one, like the old space shooters. And so um, there's one called visual scripting, but they've all got, like, they all basically teach you programming. But if you're more, if you find it hard to learn the typing programming, the, the hardline code, they kind of just break it in a bit easier. A, a cool one is called Bolt. And it um, has a it, the visual script comes um, you script together like a flowchart, and then it comes up with the C plus script that is generated from the flowchart you've made. And so you could review what changes that makes. And that's basically the whole of programming is just telling the computer how something works, and then allowing it to. It's all very yes no, or if this happens, do this. Um, it's quite basic. Um, but then you go into design, and design's a whole other thing, you know. You can make a shit game quite easily, and and you know it might be a laugh. You can put funny sprites and the stuff, but if you try and put in story and you know even good level design, so it's got so many different things. So it's a bit of a journey. One of the things, um, one of the things I notice is like uh, there's an interest in like old old form uh, arcade gaming, which is kind of it really surprised me that the pixel, you know, really really old. Tiles oh, where there's like, yeah, the block, block, uh, you know, do you think that's because of Minecraft? No, 
Not for me, at least. Like um, a lot of us guys our age, we grew up with the uh, um, Gallagher and things like that. It was all sprites. We, some of us made sprite sheets or like uh, made a character that we wanted to put in something, but we couldn't in little pixels. And it's just living that kind of fantasy. But um, now what you can do with pixel art is you can do the layers like in Photoshop. So if I made a character who's being electrocuted, I can have it behind them transparent on front so you can see the character through it and mm. it, when you've got layers in there you can do a lot more exciting effects um, but one thing i learned though is like uh, on the animation standpoint there's good mm. software for it but i went to animation school and you got your um, in-betweens which is just a little oh, i'm moving my arm from here to here and you got your keyframes where this is the movement i want to make and yeah. i'm making my sprites and i'm making them like this and i need to be thinking okay i'm going from there to there and I, there's a lot of them don't have all those in-between, so you can jump to an extreme pose or a new you know, design. And it's very easy to just copy and paste and just go, I'm moving this arm a little. And so it teaches you animation as well, kind of. So I've got to work on that. Like, I should be better at animation. But. Well, one of the things I noticed was, like, uh, um, with, with the more expensive clip studio paint, it has a built-in animation, style, um, animation uh, platform in it. Uh, and the um, in the software and the application, so that you could you know you could do your two D art, but then you, they would have like a three D modeling stuff where you could just move it you know move an arm a little bit. You can put your uh, skin on that, and I think that's that's what really surprises me uh, about how easier it is now to game and create games. Uh, we've got no excuses. We've got such good tools now. Um... I mean, you got to learn to get good at them, though. So, I mean, I consider myself mediocre at Photoshop. Like, you know, you can be complete amateur. I know how to piece something together and I chuck on some effects. I know how to color and stuff and do layers. Um, but you got to put in the time because when you start as anything, Unity, a sprite I use for the sprites, excellent animation in there. Mm. And um, very good um, to learn the interface. But every single program I pick up, like I tried ZBrush a few years back, and you have to follow tutorial just to learn how all the tools, like how to make the basic stuff. You can go, okay, I know how to sculpt something, but how do you do that in this program? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, there's a, there's a good learning curve with everything, uh, but you've got so much available to you. A lot of the software is free. A lot of the stuff you can do for free. If you make something on Unity, it builds it, and you can release it onto mobile. You can release it onto the internet, you know, onto a web yeah. platform. You can make a um, proper full release game. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I found is the 3D programs on my computer is all right. I bought a nice computer, and I prefer Pixlite, thankfully. You a nice computer, you the stole there for a bit. <laughs> yeah, my computer does right. try doing 3D, um, but I'm not passionate about 3D, so it's not, you know, I, I like 3D games. I've played a lot of them, right. but I like more hand-drawn and stuff mm -hmm. or like Pixel, so... I'm, it, you know, it gives you that ability, but yeah, you'd have that limitation with computers. Mm. Say someone else picks up Unity and goes, I want to make uh, Doom, and then they're th the same thing. Their computer isn't good enough to do the 3D stuff to a, any good standard. Yeah. You might be able to build a room you can walk around. Um, then, you know, you've got other avenues you can explore, and that's exciting. Well, I mean, I looked at this, like the latest uh, Ghost in the Shell, right? The latest Ghost in the Shell is an incorporation of... Um, animation traditional animation and modern day gaming which really surprised me because i didn't expect it to be that way i know that earlier on they did a 3d um 3d movie uh a while back called uh, i think it was ghost in the shell the new movie right and uh, but the latest one on netflix because netflix is basically i think have now purchased the whole the the company are not the rights to do um ghost in the shell which i mean which is one of my most favorite uh animations uh, you know jet animation shows ever because i just love you know uh major Kusu kusanagi matako and i think you know it's just a, such a great um story and um great really fantastic um uh world building you know and and the fact is that they were able to uh, design these things into a 3D format, which looked like gaming. I was like, this This looks like a game. They could basically make this, take this and turn it into a game story, right? And be like, hey, you have to go do this because it's it's so well done 
3D way. I mean, I love 3D. This is the thing, that, you know, even though I do 2D art and stuff, I, f I love 3D gaming. I think it's amazing that you can walk around and see around things. And, you know, and... Um, One way. Yeah, and, and, but this is the thing. It makes everything so much easier for us now to be able to do that. And, you know, whereas you don't have to go to three years to school to do, learn how to do it. You can just do it from home, learn how to do Steam. It's, it's, I mean, a school would streamline it faster. I mean, you, you need to focus it. Like, that's what I found the time because like, mm. I can be average or makes, you know, follow a tutorial, but to uh, dabble and to play and try the different stuff, like, mm. you need that. Uh, I mean, if you're not very focused, like right now you're locked inside and you don't yeah. have too much to yeah. play video games or watch TV or whatever, yeah. but uh, you, could, you have more of an excuse to focus. And I guess the thing about school is if you have a good school, you have that kind of, you know, people around you to inspire you or encourage you. You know, you had a pitfall, you got support. You do have that online. And a mm. lot of the online tutor people say, don't do a school because online the technology is changing all the time. And I, I guess that's true too. Yeah. But you got both sides, you know. Like I think a school could be valuable. A lot of them are overpriced, I think, the game schools and things. Well, but, that's a thing. I mean, because, like, I mean, how much, do you, how much are you going to get out of it? I mean, uh, you know, like when we were the first year of school, like first two months and everybody was saying, don't worry about how, how much work you put in because C's get your degrees. And I was like, so you already decided. So, Tina, you have already decided that you're going to do shallow rubbish work because as long as you get a C on your, you know, on your marking, you'll be fine because you get your degree at the end. I'm like, so you, you come out. You're gonna have the same, same degree as me, for all my hard work, and and you're gonna have done half the work or a third of the work, but you're gonna be on your degree. It's gonna say exactly the same thing as the amount of work I put in. That's a shame. I mean, it's like that in the real world. You know, like I trained to be a baker. I got a piece of paper. I was paid more, and then I'm an experienced, qualified guy. I go and do it again. I'm like a master baker all of a sudden, and I work with people who work there for years, a million times better than me. Yeah. Uh, I think the difference with art and creativity, though, for me, is you should go there because you're passionate and you want to make something. If I went to a game school, I'd fucking... Oh, sorry, I shouldn't swear so much. I'd want to make a game. I'd want to make something cool. I want to meet someone and start a cool project. Yeah. Because that's why I'd go to one of those schools. Um, yeah, why would you take away three years of your life if you're not going to come out on the top of the game at the end of it? I mean, because it's that kind of thing you go there to enjoy. Like your direct, you know, your film school and stuff. Like you go there to enjoy the the art of making film, something yeah. you're passionate about. You want to make the next, you know, Friday the Thirteenth or something. You know, like a, you know, I don't understand why you go there and short. I guess people shortchange themselves all the time. I mean, yeah. I guess now. Yeah. But like, I was um, one of the games I was playing. The guys just went up and said, "I've spent three years doing this on my own." Right. <laughs> On Patreon, I've been, I didn't, you know, basically just put it all together and stuff. And this, yeah, you know, that's, you know, takes me to do like the whole idea of Patreon, you know, creators who basically self, um, like uh, people fund them for their work. They come out and say, hey, this is what I'm going to make. This is where it is. These are things. This is what's going to be in the story. This is what, the, what it's going to look like. Uh, and here's a sample of it. And, if you're interested, okay. please support me, right? <laughs> and you're probably going to be able to, you're going to be, you know, once you've set, set out a game, uh, you're going to find like, okay, you know what? Each year I'm going to, each six months, whatever, I'm going to do the next level, the next level. And because you have that support, say, for, say, a campaign from, by being on Patreon, something similar to that, you're going to find out that people like your game. And one of the things I found out was that with the, uh, you know, like uh, places like uh, itch.io and Game Jolt, People on Patreon have created the games. Now they're able to either give it for free, so you can download it for free, or pay what you pay what you want. And the more you play it, I mean, I, I look down. You know, I like this game. I'm going to pay for this one, and this one I'll try it out. When I get to like the next level, and this is they've done the first story. You know what? I enjoyed this first story so much on free. I'm going to pay for the next story. Because if it's a if it's a good story, if you can if you you know if, like I said if you love what you're gonna what you're doing, 
your quality of your work is going to be good. And, and people, you know, I mean, like I played about four different games over the last week and I don't even play visual um, novels before. Right. Uh, I mean, for those of you guys who know what visual, visual novels aren't, are, it's basically a pick, a pick a path. The old books, it's basically pick a path. You, you, you are part of the story. You get to choose how things happen, you know, and um, you decide where you want to go, who you want to go with, what you want to do, how the stories, and you're the master of the story. You're the character. And I think this is, and with, it's unlike like, um, you know, RPGs where you're just shooting at things randomly or whatever. You're still involved. You know, and I think even with RPGs, you're still involved because you you have a level each time to get up to. Uh -huh. Whereas this is kind of like um, like being part of the movie. Yeah, well, that's know? cool. Like part of a chapter. Like, yeah. I guess it's the, it's the length and repetition that's probably makes those less kind of a push for you know from the big houses. Because an RPG, yeah. they want you to spend weeks and years playing it and, and grinding whereas a novel you could maybe got three endings or you know even 10 but you might watch three of them and play yeah. it yeah you know, and then you're probably done with it but it's shorter you know more compact so that's cool well, with, the, with these ones you can always you can save where you are if you made the wrong decision or your decision you want to make a change of decision you can always go back and change it um you know it's like re Real life, you know, uh, what is that um, called when respawn? you die and you want? Yeah, respawn. respawning. Yeah, <laughs> whereas you're not respawning as in the same, uh, you know, as a. I mean, you're not you're not dead. It's just that you made a wrong decision, and you want to experience another decision. And um, I think this whole idea of uh, graphically, like, sorry, you just you just have two choices, and it's graphically like a page, or how does it yeah. work? Well, you um, you start off as you know you put in your name and so on and you have a um, let's say um, you're, you're a king of your, let's say you're a king of your country uh, you're you're the new king of your country and you um, and you want to make um, you know you have to go somewhere to um, battle someone and who do you send so you pick A B and C right and they go out and do something or and then the impact of that. This and and you're basically reading a story, and you're choosing how the stories and who where the characters go, how you interact with them, and I, and I love this whole idea so much that as soon as I played, I was like, I want to write one of these, I want to create one a visual novel, right? I want to do this, you know. And the idea is, you can have your three D or you can have your two D or or you can have your pixel characters. <laughs> And I've seen some, which is what which is what surprised me. It's like this was asking, do you know how? Um, who are actually you know? Why are people creating games? What's the impact of pixel? Uh, um, pixel, you know, and how do you know people play these? They're puzzle games. Um, well, let's have a look. So they're sports, experimental, sci-fi, action, uh, procedural generation, uh, slice of life type things. Uh, anime horror ghost you know so i mean there's one here called i demon right uh, i just saw this and um and uh hold on it's a prototype so someone's just decided to create it and it's um i demon on by Sec securus and let's see it's a web game and it's basically a, a square character by the looks of it running around and so, you know, you, yeah, so it's this, quite, this hopefully you can, yeah, it's a pixel. There's, there's lots of them. I don't yeah. know why I'm so surprised. <laughs> Pixel's yeah. great. So, you know, so this guy's saying, uh, was WASD to move, J to splash, uh, you know, that's the standard button, yeah. Uh, yeah. This is just old school gaming. There was a time when the computers all got too fast for the old games and they ran like shit. But nowadays, yeah. like well, they're all stable and run properly. Like there was a whole period of time where the uh, the low spec games like that would run like crazy. Let's just see. Um, so, where are you going with your pixel gaming? Right. So, I mean, I mean, you're doing it to enjoy. You're doing it to build. You learn. 
you know, is there something where you want to take it further, or is it just doing for fun to share amongst your friends? Well, I'm hoping that I do something fun with it. I'd like to produce something or multiple somethings um, mm. to keep on developing the skills, you know. Um, and I've I've had a lot of ideas, or I've always wanted to make games, and so like I got yeah. tons that I want to do or I've talked about. Um, I was going to do like a flying saucer kind of abduct abducting people kind of one, cartoony. That was yep. something when I was a kid that you know, I, I made some sprites for and I put them up a little while ago. Um, I want to do one with um, where it's like the classic kind of into your name like you talked about where you're yep. a warrior with a sword and you're all blacked out. So you're you yep. kind of, it's you, but it's really basic. It's just pixels, you know? And so I've been making the start so screen. So good thing there, right? So I played a game where I'm, it's a blacked out character. So you don't like this, uh, like say there's something hiding your face every time there's a shot of everybody else. Yeah. And then I played one with where you got to see who the character was. And I was like, oh, uh, I don't really, I don't want to, yeah, I don't really, this is a bit, but after a while I got into it. I didn't mind what the guy looked like, you know, that the main character looked like, the, um, the OP. Or is it, is it OP? Main character? Or MC, right? So the MC, you got to see what the MC look like. So <laughs> the idea, the, the idea, um, you know, whether you get immersed in it without the M, M, being able to see the MC or being, um, being, um, you know, or the MC is not there. How do you think? I um, mean, like that's my experience. Like I rather well, not I, see. I wanted to show my screenshot, but I don't know how to put it up on here. Um, but what my idea is, because my game is going to be little. It's for a phone, is what I'm thinking. I'm going to make a little phone one where enemies all charge down, and you this little guy down here, and you play yeah. on like a little field of vision, like the bottom bit of the screen. You can move left and right and up a little bit. And yeah. all these guys keep on spawning towards you, and you're this little dude. You're this little barbarian dude. And I'm thinking not to make a sexist, I'm going to make a female. So you can be male or female, but you're, you're, you're very yeah. like uh, nondescript. And so you can upgrade yourself, but you're basically fighting a horde and they just keep on coming at you and then there'll be some different kind of breakdown for it. But my whole idea is it's all about the idea of being the, the character. And so that silhouette is just an introduction to put your name. It'll be like into your name hero or whatever. And I'll remember yeah. it and I'll kind of mention you at times because yeah. you've entered your name. And beyond that, it doesn't matter because you're, you're yay back. And you yeah. get different. You might get a helmet, but you know it doesn't matter. You're just a little dude. <laughs> and that was the cool <laughs> thing with some of those pixels, like little dudes. Yeah, you, you, know, you can be whoever you like. Mm. You might like one with a red hat. <laughs> but this is the cool thing about it: that you don't have to be uh, like. You, there's no need to overthink what you're doing because people. There's so many different people playing so many different games. I mean, you look at uh, what is this one? New one called Animal Farm. Right? Is it Animal Farm or oh, Animal know. Crossing? Animal Crossing. Animal Crossing. Right? So, so this this game created for eight year olds, which adults are playing. Right? It's like Minecraft, game created for children, which adults are making a huge deal out of it. You know, this whole merchandising thing and everything. You know, and but this is a thing that, like, you know, uh, when you're creating something, as long as you yourself enjoy creating it the passion of that uh, other people are going to you know enjoy that as well because i think the more complicated a game becomes the more you well, kind of you could be a better complicated thinker than you could be a, a sprite designer you know yeah. like that's a problem i have is like you know you can that you could actually have a brain that goes all right if this happens this ha you know, have a whole flow chart and then for you that's simple but that'd be like an advanced mechanic and if that you know if that worked that would work well but then your yeah. graphics might really let you down but then it's still a good game you know like there's all those bits going together and i guess the idea is to put it together and then reskin it you know like it's hard to get a a perfect product they say the uh engine is the core so the dynamics like you make a little white block do mm -hmm. what you want it to do against some green blocks and then then you worry about checking uh Sprite some as I'm a graphics guy, I like making the the little sprite arts and doing that thing more. Uh, but it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to like you can definitely create, but it's uh, you know getting that whole polish or getting it done you know to a standard is, mm. is tricky because you get real basic and it, if you make the whole thing work well like that, and um, it's a fine standard. 
but then you know like it's getting everything all to marry up so let's talk about selling your game right so like say so you've made your game and unlike the old days right mm -hmm. unless unless you you got to deal with sony you got to deal with a nintendo or sega and all that you've worked all this out you've got an amazing game now you're able to just go on to like itch.io or you sell it yourself right you can sell That's it yourself yeah uh, what's the age of that for everything like <laughs> Like you really like getting a deal with Sony or whatever. It does happen for people, but like it's few and far between. All these people are just dedicated to their thing. Mm -hmm. Mainly the ones who finish good product go out to all the shows and promote it a bit, and they use Patreon and things mm -hmm. for support. But a lot of them, if you look, good games on the phone or online, yeah. are free or sold for a dollar ninety nine or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you know, like, but there's heaps of good research on this on YouTube. I look at all the stories about making games and people's journeys. And they, they show you, I made 35,000 for this. Uh, you know, this many people downloaded it. And, mm -hmm. you know, some people don't have it for free. And then the ad revenue or the support, you know. Mm -hmm. um, like, so there's a million avenues. And then, a, you know, a good portion of it's luck. You know, like, I think with anything, you can't go into it and expect to retire. And especially not as, you know, i got a long journey ahead of me. Mm -hmm. I hope that I meet some other people and I can work with them on something. Well, one of the things, I mean, for anything you're creating, you got to make sure you're copyrighted it. And, and this is the problem with a lot of gamers is that they don't copyright the ownership of what they're creating. Anything. It doesn't matter anything. Like art, anything, you know, like you've well, doing a comic book. Whatever. This with copywriting, though. I thought but if it? you created it and put it into the mainstream and you created it first and you were, you know, it was established at X state, on Patreon, yeah. then that's copyrighted as a creative law, kind of. Well, it, the, there's, it's, it gets a bit weird when it's a country that doesn't honor, you know, <laughs> that you live in a country that does not honor copyright, that doesn't care if you're stealing from another country's citizen. And so I'm always, you know, I'm always saying, well, you know what? Copyright that thing. Go, you know, go, to, go, uh, go online. Pay that, pay that hundred twenty dollars or whatever if your business, but pay that twenty dollars or fifty dollars to copyright your game or your art or but your you idea. Art, do you have to do every character? Like, what are you copywriting to overarch it? Well, you like, you copyright a story. Am I copywriting one game or am I? Well, basically, you open up as a co um, company. Say, hey, this is RTV. Uh, and RTV is creating such 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 such. These are the samples of such and such such. This is this is a digital copy of the such and such. Now it's part of our citizenship, our country's law. It's uh, you know. So whenever somebody comes in and goes, "Hey, uh, did you see that somewhere else?" Because have a talk to our business guy. <laughs> you know, because I'm really you know. I think the idea is that a lot of people, and the reason I say that is that. In 2018, what, um, um, a gentleman uh, who was creating a game here in North, North Tech, he was telling me about it. I said, stop. Don't tell me what your game's about. Have you copyrighted it? Have you <laughs> gone to IP, intellectual properties, and put it down? He goes, no. I said, before you get up on there on stage and talk about it, because he was going to talk about it at the game, um, at, at your trigger finger gaming expo, right? I said, dude. Just go, go go to the intellectual properties thing, put, you know, open, you know, list down what it is, list down how, you know, what the storyline is. Sure, it might be similar to somebody else, but your character names and all that, you're protected now. So when you go to speak, somewhere they can't be taking notes and take, you know, taking what you own. In a way, that's a compliment, you know, it's still got to put in the work. Like some yeah. people say that, like, if you're afraid of sharing an idea, you know, like people, like when you're rolling around an idea, mm. um, they don't want it anyway. It's not anything there to you know, other than an mm. idea that you're discussing. But you gain more from the feedback on the idea. Like they might go, yeah. you go, hey, you know how your guy does this? Maybe you should do this instead because that would be cooler because. And you're like, well, yeah. wait a minute. that's And so like. Oh, yeah, know, but, but that's that's afterwards. So like if you already have your your um, your bases covered, you can basically talk about it whenever to anybody you know because now now on your yeah. level though you know like as a comic guy yourself 
And as someone who, you know, like lots of people want to dabble, but like, like, are you going to actually be able to produce it regularly? Are you actually going to be able to make the website and the product? You know, mm. if you don't, then then realistically, having a website for your characters and your your bits, you're done. It doesn't need a copyright, you know. Like, it's you know, you've done as much as you can with it. You, yeah. you know, you've given as much legs as you could, and you know, you'd like it to go further. And maybe well, the, someone will do it, but the other thing is sometimes while you're still developing your thing. Mm -hmm. someone will basically go, you know what? And this has happened. This is why I bring it up because somebody will use that and go, this is my artwork and make money off it. And it's happened. It happens every, every day just about. Yeah. But I mean, it's, the thing is like, I know, I mean, it's, it's weird. I mean, um, if you're an artist, you just want to put your work out there, show people how much you've done and stuff. But the problem is then you, after a while you go, um, I don't feel good about this. And I know as, as much as everybody feels like, hey, I want to share this and everything. But when you see somebody else make money off your work, your hard labor, those those 30 hours a week that you spent because that five, that two hours before going to sleep you spent, right, on it, start, start niggling at you. And, you know, um, I mean, you look at, you know, you look at Microsoft and um, Apple, right, garage stuff. Imagine somebody taking that and said, yeah, you know, I'm going to do that. But, but I think it's just, it's just a safety mechanism, I think, for me because I have experienced theft. Yeah, I, I have experienced copyright theft on my property. That's definitely sensible, and it's definitely something people think about. But I'm just saying, like, I don't think it should get in the way of your process, oh. especially if it's an amateur like, yeah. I mean, probably you're going to make like 10, 50 games before you have anything that's really, I mean, maybe one does work out, you know, by, by magic, but you know, like you can't rely on that. And like, probably you're not going to believe that initially, you know, enough to go, oh, I need to go copyright this today. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even if you do those 10 things, but if you have, if you have it listed as that's part of your thing, I mean, like whenever I like. A little sprite art I did for my, uh, the kind of setting the name of the hero. Oh, where's my camera there? It's real basic, but you know, I took a photo. I, I, I found photos and I draw over, I, I kind of composite and then yeah. I um, draw over in the uh, A sprite, you know, but technically I copyrighted, you know, I did some of those cool barbarian and I go, I'm just going to pixelize him as in a cool post. I edited him. I changed yeah. him. I took, I took his pants off and gave him the Conan and the Barbarian fur because yeah. that's, you know, I prefer that kind of imagery. And I think if he's going to get armor, he'll start off mm -hmm. as a royal barbarian and, you know, dress up a bit. And so, but I mean, yeah, that was, but it's so small and so basic. Like, I mean, is somebody going to come after me for copying their pose? Well, probably not. If they probably like there's, a big, there's a change, there's a percentage of change that you can do uh, which isn't considered theft. And it's fifteen percent. Oh, so you could, <laughs> yeah, so like, like I mean, if you change something, the thing is, if you change something more than fifteen percent, then it's yours, All right? So if you took a, um, if you do a drawing, how does it? Sorry, how Rob Leefield does it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like if you do fifteen percent from different to somebody else's, then you're fine. I mean, poses. Everybody's gonna have to, you know. Pose. Well, yeah, I just, yeah, I had a picture in my mind. I like if I found a photo of it exactly, I just go, all right, do that, pop that there, and I yeah. actually gave him long hair. He had kind of cropped hair in the picture too. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I do photo references all the time. That's why they look a bit like they do. I think one of the great things. I mean, getting back to the different styles of gaming we have, it's just brilliant. You know, I think I was looking at this list here on um, you know IO. It's just um, on HIO and you know, you got doodles, <laughs> you know, doodle games. Then you have like 3D gaming. Then you have like animated style, cartoon style. You got Snake Core, which looks like um, Rick and Morty, right? Uh, you've got you've got another one like uh, which is actually this one here looks more like Rick and Morty, Crown Tip Trick, and it's for free. You know, yeah, um, yeah, and it's just I just think it's just such a great um think like like we're doing like learn you know me learning how to do this thing um with stream yards but also a good time to learn gaming 
I mean, we still got about another two, three weeks to go. It's a good time for everything. I, th yeah. I think, uh, hopefully, after, after COVID-19, I mean, I've always had my priorities set a certain way, and I think more people are doing that too. <laughs> Thanks, full screen. They're kind of um, coming around and realizing that, you know, some of their home projects, you might be working on a car, it might be renovating, is more important than some of the other things they are prioritizing. Just a thought. Hey, sorry. Um for those of you um, who just joined us, and I lost, I, my computer went backwards to and kicked me oh. out. So I'm not sure if you guys saw me or not. No, so, just, uh, I went full yeah. screen. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll put you on full screen again. But um, so we're talking about different types of gaming um, games available. So I think, as I was saying, that it's, and I'm sure Arrigo answered it already, but it's, it's a great time to learn. You know, it's it's just being stuck in your home. What else are you gonna do, right? You're not working. Why don't you use that eight hours to do create a game or learn something? And and you, you know, you've been being very busy, uh, creating, uh, you know, um, games. I, I mean, I've created a level of something, yeah. but it's just like it's all these tests together. It's like a little Ewok that jumps around and fires pink balls. Uh. So um, you mentioned like in finishing because you know we have a forty minute mark uh, almost. So let's talk about the different. Uh, like we already talked about the other um, games. So I mean different software to do this. What would you suggest, right? Like I mean uh, a lot of people create their games and check it on Steam and stuff like that. Uh, what would you suggest as the you know, best best tool to create games right now? Oh, that's easy. Oh, that's easy. Well, Unity, Unity is the most kind of free thing to free. It's got tons of support. Um, it's got good courses on Udemy, which is what I use, where I pay for them, but they, they always go a little cheaper. Um, so, I mean, I spent nineteen ninety nine US on a few courses, but I mean, I've been doing them for hours and hours and hours, and I learned tons. Um, so this is Unity.com? Yeah, Udemy.com is really good for, for training on anything. How do you spell that? Udemy, U-D-E-M-Y.com. Um, so if you just search Unity or game design, I've, I've signed up to a board game design course, but they teach you the same core concepts, so maybe you want to make a board game on your, your game design. Um, there's um, visual, um, no, sorry, uh, what's that called? Dialogue, no, not, there's one that kind of talks around um, composing a good story, so like, mm. And it takes you on a journey through sprite art, um, but it teaches you about the dialogue and um, storytelling, uh, which looked really cool. I wanted to get that one too. My problem is I got too many. Like I got to just chip away on these pixel art courses. Mm. Um, and the cool thing with doing those courses is most of them will recommend a program. They'll go, oh, well, I use this program. It's really good at this and it's free. I use this one. It does cost, but, you know, like I'm, I'm using it right now and this is what I use all the time. And so you have that choice. Like the, the ones that I got that are good on Steam, uh, Ace Sprite, uh, I think it was $20 as well with it. And it's the best kind of animating and in between kind of one on the on there and then there's one called uh pixel edit that's good for tile sets so if you're doing an above view rpg it's one of the better ones for making tile sets but you can make it on anything but they're just specifically geared towards pixel art and so therefore everything is designed to work well with that well, well i mean um 3d modeling right uh they teach um art school 3d modeling you know if you, if blender. you um, yeah blender and, so you got like um, at the moment it's nine dollars ninety nine down from one hundred twenty four dollars. You know, um, drawing courses uh, in different styles. They're so good. Like I, you, you yeah. learn something. You might not be as good as the person at the end of them, but you always learn lots. And then you can go back and reuse them. You constantly got access. You can ask questions. You can go through mm -hmm. questions other people have asked. They so got you go shit. I'm stuck on this particular bit. And then you go to the questions and answers and you're like, you can search them and someone else has had that problem. They've got the answer. It's like, sweet. Um, I, yeah, I can't recommend them enough. Like, I love that kind of stuff. And I mean, if you can't afford game design school and stuff, uh, fully do that. That's, What's, um, yeah. um, they're saying here it's over 100,000 online courses with new editions published every month. I mean, 
obviously there's going to be something for someone on there. There's you know, <laughs> yeah, there's not, you can't complain. It's not, not, you know, it's not what I'm looking for when there's like over a hundred thousand different courses. There's free and, ones too for, for pretty much everything. So please try a free one if you are interested in trying. Um, there's a little light of fire and, you know, the free ones often don't have as much to them. But if you're learning something the first time, like Unity, I'm doing one of their free courses, and it walks you through the whole infrastructure. And then you can do a more advanced one once you know your way around and pay for it. Well, well, I mean, the other thing is like the whole, I mean, like, let's, let's finish off with this. The idea is once, once you've got your games created, you can put them out there. And then you have a choice as a as a as a player or as a gamer to see if you want to play it you know and and most of them are free just you know and that's because your ideas are too there's a huge ideas pool because they say there's not really many original ideas but now a lot of things are mashed up so you get one game like this crazy farm you get one game skater kid or whatever yeah and you mix them together and then you got this crazy new thing and so experiencing all these different things where people have had crazy ideas and made something out of them, they're inspirational. Yeah, they're not always the best, but sometimes something in them is really good. You know, maybe the menus are really good. You know, well, I mean, talking about mashing up, you've got like Simpsons mashed up with, um, you know, with, which is Family Guy, basically, you know. And we're going to, oh, next time we're going to talk about that. I think um, I want to talk about whole the whole, um, Cartoons, <laughs> but but in finishing, but in finishing, how how much of this game have you finished so far? Game, um, I I could make a game a platformer, but I just working through it. Like I that that engine that I bought, that was the most expensive bit that I bought. It was uh, I think fifty US or something. It's it's got the whole infrastructure there, so you can move your yeah. dude, you can hit him. He's got a score. He's got this. Got a level structure, and so basically you rip it apart and you use all the bits. It's got zip lines and things, which is cool. But then you know I'm trying to think of my own ideas and then think about what I'm going to take from it. So I got to build the um what's the word the assets for it. So that's why I'm working on the art stuff like trees. For the background, trees prepare like scrolling, you know, clouds, buildings, yeah. uh, that, that kind of thing. So you really got to break it down and do it. I'm not very directional, which is my problem. And so I kind of just go all over the place. But the idea is to kind of build up your your asset library. And then, you know, you've got to make them all kind of work together. So I get a particular style. And so, um, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm not really sure. It's probably going to be a platform game because that's what I'm – yeah, it's going to be the most easiest for me to do. But it's probably mm. I, I could do a side scroll or beat them up. Yeah, that's probably more my taste. So maybe that. Cool. So, um, man, uh, yeah, good chat. I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, like I've never talked about gaming before uh, because I mean I enjoy playing them and stuff. But we never did start, talk to any uh, designers and you know what the aspects of gaming and. And all the different areas and platforms you can get it out on, and the, you know, just being this last week, just playing visual games, novels, and it's like, I want to know how games are made. I want to know, um, you know, how to um, get into connecting with artists who actually do three D. I have no idea how to do three D, and I would never want to learn because I don't have the time. But obviously, there's somebody there sitting out there with that skill who's going. I need. I don't. I need a story. I need a story. And uh, um, courses, man, like you, the quality you can get out of 3D now, like that blender free, and then the courses as a blender guru on YouTube. Like, he taught me how to make a donut that looks like it's a real donut there. I and saw I, that. I was making real, you know, shitty little shapes and things. Mm. And blender's more like ZBrush, where you have the sculpting options. So it makes their meshes really heavy. But if you're more artsy fartsy like me, like I like the kind of sculpting your face by peeling off this layer and, you know, like sculpting in the eye sockets and whatnot. And so I, I enjoy that aspect. So like you, it's kind of hands on. It takes away all the numbers and putting squares with circles to make, you know, different shapes. You're kind of just yeah. ripping through and sculpting. Um, yeah, there's nothing holding you back. <laughs> Do a course. 
uh, yeah, for anybody who's into creating games, you know, uh, you've got all these platforms to actually get yourself into a career in it. And I think that's the other thing is like, hey, even if you don't, if you do it on the side, if you already have a career, you can always dabble and enjoy it. And there's all, if you want to make a buck on the side with it, there's so many different places you can do that. And there's no restrictions now because of the technology, you know, we can be, build a million dollar man. We have the technology. And so, and it's so much easier. And as, um, you know, as Rico said, you know, Udemy, you don't have to pay a hundred thousand dollar course, uh, um, you know, uh, at the uni, never again. You can learn at your own pace, and you can learn at your own time, at home, at work, while you you know, during your break, and enjoy. You know, there's no reason not to be able to do it now when you have all this time to learn how to create games, a game that you are interested in doing, not someone else is thinking about doing, but what you want to do, either 3D, pixel, anime, cartoon, uh, you know, whatever. It's just, it's so easy to be able to learn now at home. And like, what is it like $9.99 right now? You could do that with Udemy. And, but like Rico said, there's a whole bunch of free courses. So, yeah. yeah. So thanks guys for watching us uh, on this impromptu. It was like, um, I just messaged Rico. Said, Let's do this. this. A custom you've got. I like it. The, the dual screen. Yeah, I think it's. It, it's it's uh, yeah i think it's it's cool i think you can get up to about like on the other ones you can get up to about three people and oh, nice. do that and have one sitting over uh, the top of you oh, that's and, cool. and, also, that. and also six people so how about we put you on the big screen <laughs> you got yourself on the big screen <laughs> let me uh let me put myself out Hey, <laughs> if anyone wants to make games and um, they say it's easier together, um, if you've got a little bit of experience like myself or working on it, feel free to message me, uh, rtv666 at hotmail.com, and um, we can do some, you know, chat online and work on it. There's nothing limiting you anymore. Anyway, I don't know where Ari's gone. He stopped speaking as well as going away. <laughs> Maybe I should go. Peace out. Hold on. All right, guys. So I just wanted to show you all um, that I haven't done a gaming, um, you know, live stream before. And want to just let you know that, uh, you know, one of my friends is actually doing, creating games, which he didn't have time to do before. But now due to lockdown, he's able to. And like I said, guys, there's no time not to learn than right now. It's, I mean, the best time right now when you – are stuck at home, you know, and people are annoying you, go do a course on your mobile even, or your pad or tablet, just be, you know, do it. Um, I mean, I, did, I didn't even play games before, like what I'm playing now, which is visual novels. Totally enjoyed it. I'm hooked as hard out as I've played four different ones, and I'm like, I want to create games now. You know, not cre myself create them, but I mean, I want to write for them that somebody can create with me with them. And so, yeah, but I have a specific genre I'm looking at doing. So, you know, it's it's something I haven't touched on in my artwork yet. So very adult, very out there, and hopefully someone, yeah, will be interested. But, you know, we'll see how the world, you know, how it goes. And But like I said, guys, check out Udemy. This is the, um, the website addressed here. Once again, um, check it out. Try the um, try the courses for free, and if you like them, you know, obviously they're going to allow you to do some more. And I will send Rico a visual novel. So I think it's just such a cool um, cool time to learn. Like I learned this, and um, you can too if you you know. And I and I'm really not good at learning that stuff, but I always want to learn. And if if you always want to learn. You, you are going to learn and you're going to have fun learning. So if you're stuck at home, man, try something new to kill the boredom because all you, otherwise you can just sit there, watch TV all day, Netflix, HBO is going to start in about another three weeks, HBO Max. But after a while, you're going to get bored. So rather than getting bored, do, do something to learn while you have the time. Free time, 
best time to do it. Kakiteano, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, uh, we'll do a follow-up with Rico about how far he's gotten with the game. But I've seen some of the um, amazing pixels he's done, and I'm just looking forward to seeing. It's not my type of game, but when I was a kid, I used to play uh, Barbarian and Atari, right? So we had Atari in our home, so grew up with it. So that's why I love gaming, and um, that's why I put the posts out about gaming all the time as well now. So thank you for watching. Good night from Whangarei, Malfunction, Kakiteano. Enjoy your um, level threes in New Zealand, everyone. For those around the world, keep safe. Be um, you know, be careful. Be mindful about others. Take responsibility for yourself, and you'll be fine. Kakiteano.